Hello, ladies and gentlemen. It's Swissman15 back with another episode of Noob School from Medieval 2 Total War. This is the second one. This will be basic cavalry tactics. Um, I hope that you guys enjoyed the last episode, and I'm glad that you guys are returning for this one. If you haven't seen the first one, if you're new, if somebody came, then uh, just go back, check the last one. This is going to really help you out. And again, if you see anyone who you think can benefit from these noob school videos, I really ask you, I really, really do, to get them to go watch these so it can spread non-noobness throughout the community. So, yeah, please do that. So, we have the overalls of cavalry in battle, which would be, um, if you can tell, I highlighted, bolded, underlined, and italicized, and added exclamation points to the word flanks, because that's really important. If you can flank an enemy with your cav and get the entire army just to rout and flee the battle, it's a lot easier than killing them off one by one. And then we have the other more still important roles is charges, countering the en enemy cavalry, which is very important, making some quick major ma that wasn't even words, making some quick makeshift responses to uh, any movement, say you, your lines break and you're like, okay, I need something there, let's get cav there, or something like that. And then just general harassment during the balance and skirmish phase. So those are the general like rules and such, um, roles which they will play and what they can do. And then they, I'll expand on that showing you all the different uh, types and stuff. So let's just go with the types of cavalry that we have. We have heavy cavalry, charge, and heavy cavalry melee, light cavalry, and missile cavalry. Heavy cavalry charge is, well, ca heavy cavalry that can do powerful charges. They are good, they are my favorite type of cavalry, and um, I, I really I really like to use them. They uh, they can do, they're very well rounded, they can usually fight in melee well, and they can also take down enemy infantry like nothing. And so, yeah, my favorite unit, the Teutonic Knights, Chivalric Knights, English Knights, Royal Bandrum, they're all very good. Very good charge. Teutonic Knights and English Knights are also very good in melee, which is nice too. Uh, for the melee cav, it's more like um, they don't have. They have usually like a charge value of five opposed to eight, but uh, they they're still really good. Like the Royal Mamluk, Stars Guard, and Quakapulu. Also, Teutonic Knights I put in there because they have maces, which makes them really strong. Um, but yeah, the Royal Mamluks have maces. Quakapulu have maces. Stars Guard just have really high stats because they're amazing. And they, they will always defeat enemy calves, so that's what they're good for. You take out the cav and then you get flanks. They're not as powerful as flanks, but they will still get the route done. Light cavalry is for... Uh, a lot of micro players will use light cavalry. They will flank around, harass the enemy, really mess them up. Allen light cav is particularly good at that. Stratiots too, but Stratiots are OP, and I'm not even going to talk about them or address them and forget them. I hate them. Turek spearmen, they are they're camel units from the... Uh, uh, moors, and they do really well to scare cab, and they hold themselves quite well, and I, I've used them a few times, and I kind of like them. Hussars and Demi Lancers, those are also very good. Like, they're like medium cab, they have some armor, they're light technically, but they do really well, and they can get some quick harass off. And then finally you have Missile Cavalry. I don't use Missile Cavalry, frankly, but uh, the, I know the general tactics to use with them. You have Dvoir, Mounted Crossbows, Genites, Varadotriete, Vardaryate, Vardaryate, there you go, and Cossacks, they're all pretty good. Cossacks being pretty good at, and Var, pretty at me, pretty good at melee, and also the very Vardaryate, I can't say that. Alright, I'm now going to show a few diagrams of basic tactics that you can employ using, you can employ Cav with. So, let's just, this is just a key, we have the uh, Trapezoids, which will, will be Skirmishers, so green is us, red is the enemy. Allied skirmisher, not ally. And then cav will be a triangle, and then infantry will be a rectangle. Movements will be shown by these arrows, and these hollowed out arrows will be missile fire, because I have nothing else to show what a missile fire would be, because I'm not really good at that. Oh, lots of talking. Anyway, so that, yeah, I'll you'll get into that. All right, so we have the basic cavalry engagement, which is, um... You're charging your cab in there. And this is fine as long as you know that your cab can outmatch their cab. So if you have Teutonic Knights with some upgrades versus some Chivalric Knights versus some upgrades, you can probably do this. But um, it's not always going to work. So what you can do is say you have, 
the same equal amount of cav, same cav quality, then you can do this. See, um, oh god, there we go. <laughs> If you can draw, spread out your lines. If you have wider lines, they usually units will perform well, and that's for every unit. Archers, infantry, everything. As long as it's not too thin, for archers, as thin as it gets is the best, especially for the skirmish phase. But uh, it's nice to have wider lines, because then they actually wrap around. So if your enemy has uh, uh, thinner lines than you, and have like more back levels, then you can actually spread out your... Um, cab like I have right here. I was gesturing with my hands, but that's not going to work. And then you can have one on the flank, and that's a nice idea, is to get them all engaged, they're stuck in the melee, and then you can do this. Have your cap behind, flank, go out, flank, hammer and anvil them, really. I'll get into that more in depth uh, later on. So it's nice, you will win the cavalry engagement, and then you can use your cav to flank more and uh, defeat the infantry, which is always a nice thing to do. Ah, sweet iced tea. But yes, so that is a very important tactic. It will help you. If you can't stretch out your arms further than your enemy, then you just have to hope for the best. And the, I have another... We have other tactics that I will include in later ones with the infantry and cavalry, which you can use to support your cav and win this engagement. Because the cavalry engagement, you must know, is the most important engagement ever. So it, yes, remember to have your lines thin at times. Uh, not too, too thin, but not... To, you don't have narrow lines because narrow lines will get surrounded and then route. Um, all right. Then we have the basic cavalry rush, or as some call it, the Swiss man, because I use it. Um, I I think I would like to think of it that I, I made it myself, but I've seen other people do it, so I don't think they all took it from me. I, I frankly didn't copy someone doing it myself. I just sort of did it one time, and it worked out really well. But basically, say your your infantry and the enemy infantry is going to collide. Say they have cav behind, the cav is out on the flank somewhere, you can send your cav into his into the enemy infantry and pretty much smash them if they have no pikes. If there are pikes, do not do it. If there are pikes, just don't. It's horrible and you'll die. Don't do it. Do not do it, okay? So the only other option that the guy has the, your enemy would have is to send his cav to counter your cav. If he doesn't, you will crush his infantry, lose very few cav, and then you'll probably win the battle from there. So it's a very, very useful tactic, but you have to get a nice charge off for it to work, and you have to have charge cav for it to work. Don't try to use melee cav for this, and don't try to use light cav for this. Oh, back, um, right here. Oh, oh, wrong way. <laughs> right here. If this unit right here, off in the corner, this, um, this cav of yours, this would be very good for an Allen light cav unit or something like that. Light cavalry does this really well because they can run around fast and get there fast before your lines will break because if you're outnumbered you might actually lose because quality I mean quantity trumps quality so remember that. Alright um, right here so then after you have charged in your infantry I mean your cavalry into their infantry you want to pull out like that like I have have these units go this way those units go that way and one unit go back and then you can use them and go around like this and fight the off the enemy cavalry and then you can have your infantry finish the job like I have shown here. And this is very, very useful for useful rushes, useful for balances, as long as there's no pikemen. You'll crush their army really quickly and it's very nice. So also, with that being said, remember that someone else can do that to you. So have your cav in an area that can support your infantry if such a case would happen. Alright, hammer and anvil, the basic use of cav, really. Say you have a line engagement like this, you have the enemy infantry and your infantry all fighting in a nice line. You got a cav unit, you go out back, and then you charge in the back, pull out, charge in the back, you get routes, you kill a ton, and that's where cav really gets some um, help. Because say this unit here routes, this unit wraps around, that unit routes, and it's a chain, barrel roll down. All the units route and you will win the battle, in theory at least. And it's a very, very useful tactic and you should try it out if you can because that is the key to winning. Hammer and anvil, very basic, very important. Don't forget it. You have to use hammer and anvil. You don't have to use my cavalry rush. That's for more of a daring player if you're ready for risk or not. And um, this hammer and anvil though is important. You must do it if you want to win. Unless you have no cav, unfortunately, then you have to Look at my later videos to see how you can combat enemy cav.
Right. The Juke Charge. So this is uh, usually a light cavalry dominated area or a light heavy cav, like Conquistadors and Roman Knights, but can be used by other cav. But basically, you send a nice cav unit up during a skirmish, you have the archers firing at each other, like this. Uh, this diagram clearly shows, clearly, very clearly. The trapezoids are obviously archers, and this arrows are obviously missile fire. But you take this uh, cav and you send it out and you charge into them. And the enemy might try and respond with their own cav, right, like you see right here, which will try and go here. So what you do is you wait for them to come, you turn your light cav around, and then you charge the next um, the next uh, arch unit, and then you can proceed to go on to the other ones. And this can get a lot done. You can get a ton of archers killed with using losing probably that unit of cav at, in the long run. But then you'll, you'll definitely have an advantage in the skirmish, and you can use it to shoot down his cav in the end. So if you can send a light, a light cheap unit there, Stratiots, uh, Allen Light Cav, something like that, and you get him in there, you will do wreak some havoc. And um, but be careful if you devote any unit to that, even if you send a good unit like Shivrick Knights in it that can do it. Be careful of crossbow fire because crossbows will eat you up if they get a good volley. So you want to go in between the volley, try and time it right while well, they're still firing at your archers. Uh, you, that's more of up to you and see how it goes, really. But uh, definitely do that. Please, please, please do that. Uh, get get those charges. It makes the, in the skirmish a lot more interesting, especially it will lead to more things and make them an interesting battle, really. But it's nice to get the advantage in the skirmish, uh, clearly. All right, here are some missile cavalry tactics. Um, say you're in a skirmish. Uh, I apparently you only have archers in your army because I didn't take time to show the rest. But they, you, their archers are occupied. You can send your missile cavalry in the back and shoot against his cavalry. It's very annoying. I've had it done to me, and it's the most annoying thing in the world. So you want to try and do that, get a ton of kills. Never, never, never put your missile cavalry against the enemy archers, because the enemy archers will kill your missile cav in no time. They will be done, gone, dead, forget them. They're, they're over, they're gone, they're, n they're not even worth. So what you have to do is go around and try and get that flank shots in and harass them from behind. If that happens to you, and you want to have, still want to win, you can't chase your cav after missile cav. Don't do it, it's not going to work. Instead, you have to devote yourself into charging him, a rush. A rush is very useful there, because then the missile cav is not as good in melee, so uh, it's nice. But then we have the other missile cavalry tactic, which will help you in that fight. Say they do rush against you, and you have the missile cav, and you're trying to do the tactic. Well, you can do the missile cav tactic, mid-fight. Say you have an enemy cav, and he's trying to fight off your missile cav, but you're out of range of skirmishing, you're shooting them down. So eventually, if he's smart, he'll try and be like, get the, uh, get his heavy cav out of your missile cav fire and devote to something else, like charging into this infantry over here. So what you do is you continue missile fire and you just charge after and flank him. And then that cav unit sandwiched between the infantry that he charged and your, um, uh, missile cav, which will get a nice charge, rear charge on them, hopefully will kill or rout the enemy cav and you can get rid of it fairly quickly. I've seen it done. I haven't done it myself. I don't bring Missile Cap, but it, I've seen it work really well for other players. So it's it's a theory thing, and uh, you can try and use it if you so please. Alright. Everything you should not do with Cav. Get the following units. That's Goth Knights and Lancers, Hungry Shiver Knights, because they are not good compared to the other ones, and Familia Ducale. Now let me explain. Gothic Knights are really expensive. They're for the Holy Roman Empire, and they don't perform well. They don't have a shield. And the same for the Lancers, they're for France. They cost the same as uh, Noble Knights or Chivalric Knights, and they perform less well. Don't get them, they're just not worth it. Don't get those units. Hungry Chivalric Knights, they cost 880 florins, and they have the same stats as uh, Knights Hospital or Knights Templar. But, and they also have the same sets of Royal Banjum, but Royal Banjum is much cheaper, so get the Royal Banjum if you can. Don't get the Hungry Shiver Knights, because they're not that good at all. Famiglia du Calais, they seem good, they look good, they sound good, they look good, but they do not perform well. They have 14, 13, 14 sats, they're not that good, don't get them. Just don't waste your money on them, you can get better cab. Uh, I've seen people who like them, they just don't work well. And then, don't charge your pikemen, that's clear. 
Uh, this is all what not to do, so if you see charging pikes, don't don't actually charge into pikes. I'm not telling you. I'm telling you that's not something to do. Okay? So don't charge into pikes. They'll die. That's what pikemen were developed to do. Don't sustain fight with infantry, especially two-handers. Two-handers will wreck cav. You can charge against two-handers, you can charge against regular infantry, and you get nice charges, but don't sustain the fight because the cav won't do as well in a sustained fight because the melee isn't as good. Um, beyond that, do not chase any horse archers of the enemy with heavy cavalry. It's a waste. If you have some light cavalry that's faster, you can try it. Try and get them down. If not, then you have to do what I said. Just do go for a rush. Forget that unit. It's not worth spending time on. Or you can alternatively devote an arch unit to shoot down the uh, missile cavalry. Um, never, 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 never commit to a charge into their archers like the jute charge that I showed you before with the light and back out. Once you're there, you must commit. Go for it. Because once you're in range and they, any smart player will shoot at your calf, you will take more um, hits against your calf than it was worth to pull them out. So just go for the charge once you commit. If you don't, if you're not sure, then don't do it. Don't charge your calf alone if you don't want, if you think you might pull out. And then never, never, never leave them unused. I mean, sometimes I'm guilty of this where I forget the unit's there or something, but try and get your cab. The cab is most important. You want to get the micro, you want to get the flanks, you want to use those tactics that I showed you. Get the hammer and anvil, get the cab charge, and really wreck and rout the enemy army. That is very important. So once again, I I made them don't, I made this bold, underlined, and uh, pink, and italicized, no exclamation points, so it's not as important as flanks, but remember, don't leave them unused, don't forget about them, they're the most important unit in the battle, you need them, need them, need them, need them to win, alright? And that's pretty much all I have, so I just want to take this time to uh, thank you guys for watching, I hope you guys enjoyed, I hope you guys learned with me, um, I hope you guys share this with anyone who you think will help, or ben will be beneficiary, will be beneficial. I hope that you share this with anyone that will benefit from this or be a beneficiary from it. So any new, just go politely ask them to get them to watch. I really, really hope you do. I really want these people to learn how to play this game because once you learn how to play the game, the battles are just that much more interesting. But I must note to anyone who watched this that a lot of this is theoretical. Well, not theoretical. I have practiced a lot of these uh, tactics, but... You, they're not going to work 100% of the time, they're just ideas. A lot of what happens in the battle is a lot to interpretation and using these different tactics in different forms. Stretching it, make your own style, that is what you have to do, something you're comfortable with, and learn how to use your hand for animal in your own special way. Make your own tactic, you don't want to be predictable, you don't want people to know what you're going to do. So try and do that. So yeah, uh, don't try and do this, make this out of the book. Okay, first I will do the skirmish, then I'll do his cav charge. No, you can't plan it like that. Go with the flow. You can remember these and be like, oh, I can use this here, and then quickly do it. And then you can win the battle and try it out. So I want you to try out these, uh, these tactics. I want you to use them yourself. I want you to comment on anything you think I might have missed, and I can address it and comment in your comments and uh, say why or why not I didn't include this. Maybe I just forgot. Maybe I'm just an idiot, which is probably very likely, but <laughs> it's, uh, it would be very nice to have your feedback. I, got, I hope you guys benefit from this, and I, guys, I hope you guys subscribe, and I hope you will all be here for the next episode on Infantry Tactics. Goodbye, my friends.